So let's start taking a look at the um, ramps car that I'm going to be using to uh, drive this with. This is out of the mostly printed CNC machine, so it's a little dusty. Um, I already had four drivers installed. I'm going to borrow a driver from uh, another ramps card over here. We're going to go ahead and install that here because uh, with dual drive or dual uh, end stops or automatic squaring uh, on two of the axes, I need five drivers. Oh, hold on here a second. Did you catch what I missed here? Each one of these drivers has to have three little jumpers underneath, and uh, I didn't put them in here. So uh, make sure you don't make that mistake. Each driver on a ramps card has to have three jumpers underneath to set 32 micro steps for the stepper motor. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to plug this guy back in just like uh, it would have been for the last axis here. And we'll have to do some study, or I will have to do some study to figure out which one drives which. And there's its uh, setup in the code, and there we go. And it's already been tuned up for for uh, driving the same stepper motors that it's going to be driving. <clears throat> and I believe that uh, somewhere over here is where we drive the laser off of. We'll get the details on that. My initial thought is to have two solid-state relays, and one will drive off of the voltage of each of these for either the uh, fan or the heater bed. And uh, I think that's what D8 and D9, so that you know I can either turn on the uh, the 611 router or maybe apply power to the laser. That's what I'm kind of thinking right now. But first, oh, and by the way, here's all the. Uh, end stops over here. We'll have to read the documentation make sure that we plug each end stop into the right one. Uh, some are uh, uh, zero stops and some are max end stops, but the firm will use them all independently as, uh, as uh, a home stop. We're just going to make sure we plug each one, uh, the right one into each one. And uh, we will need a power supply, of course. We'll just use the same power supply that I was using on my low rider here. And I ordered a special 12 volt power supply for the laser. Um, just because I'm not sure that that PC power supply that I was using before was maybe not putting out quite enough amps or, or dipping a little bit. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. You know, that'll come in a week or two. All right, so the trickiest part of this, I think, is getting it into the case. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit here so you can see what's going on. So this is the uh, case that Ryan designed for the ramps card and this kind of pops in over the top here and slides down very noisily. Here we go. No, oh, it's on there. We need to find a little blower, a little uh, uh, fan to fit in there. And there's also a fan cover that uh, didn't print so well for me. I don't know where it went here. It kind of was pretty weak and wimpy um, that maybe we'll print again just uh, just for games. It just covers the fan so that the air just flows up through there. But the one of the tricky parts here, I think, is getting the ramps card into the system. So from the pictures I've looked at, it looks like it should go in this way. However, there are there are a couple of slots for it here, but there's end stops down in here where it can't slide any further. And it won't slide in from the top because of the angle of this piece. So the recommendation on the thingy that this is, on thingy versus that we actually flex this and, and slip the board into the two slots but after uh, while we're flexing the part. Ooh, maybe it's going to go. I'm going to flex it. And make sure that it's back in the slot again. It wants to fall out over there. There we go. It's going in. It takes some pressure, but now it's in. Now it's in the slot. It won't go out that way, of course, and it won't go any further down than the, uh, the little stops that he has in there. And he's got it so that you run the wires up this way and then you can come out this slot and go across to whatever you need to connect to. And of course the power and USB will come out the bottom. 
and also it looks like uh, people generally run the display out the top. And I see I did a bad job on the uh, wiring or harm of the wiring covering here, so we're just gonna just gonna pull that right out. We're gonna redo it in the correct color in the correct way. So this is a polyester, I think, uh, some sort of a woven wire loom that. Uh, And get that through. It's like the old, old kids toy that was made out of I think uh, bamboo or something where you'd stick your finger in both ends and you couldn't get your finger pull your finger out you know. Same sort of product. <laughs> Same sort of uh, thought process going on there. So I'm going to cut a length of uh, wire covering to fit over this. If you have a um, hot knife, it's perfect for this job. Let me grab the material here. Here it is. It's even in a matching color for the project. It's in a. Uh, it's uh, should be plenty for this. It should look like it should work for that cable there. Um, in fact, let's lay it down. Oh yeah, that'll fit perfectly. So the problem is, uh, unlike the last time there, where everything frayed apart, you know, like uh, like this, we want to get nice, neat ends like this. So the way to do that is don't cut it with a pair of scissors. Cut it with a, a hot knife, or if your uh, soldering iron has a razor blade or a blade attachment to it, use that. I happen to have this uh, this uh, butane Dremel. Um, little torch and soldering iron. So I'm just going to unscrew the ugly looking soldering tip out of there. And here's the uh, little uh, uh, hot blade thing. So we'll just go ahead and screw that on in there. Yeah, let's give it a little torque. And I have myself a little cutting block here that I was going to use. I need a little extra because this actually goes inside the case on this end. So make it a little longer. And I think I'll probably go out to about there. I'm just going to make a little mark of where I want to cut it approximately. And we'll go ahead and see if we can get this guy lit. Yep, it's lit. You can hear the kind of whistling in there. We'll give it a minute to warm up. Nice glow inside, if you can see it. There, there you can see it. Glows back here, it glows through that little hole on either side, or at least on that one side rather than one hole. And uh, it puts a lot of heat out, so keep your fingers away from it, <laughs> or you'll get burned. So let's go ahead and turn that down a little bit. Should be hot. Right, and holding my fingers very, very far away, as far away as I can get, I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing, and I can feel the warmth, just nice and slow. There we go. And we'll go ahead and turn that guy off. Now, before too long here, we want to get uh, a probe down in there just to kind of stretch that out, so that the plastic doesn't seal in a, you know, a real tight, closed position. So yeah, so there we go. Yeah, that'll work. And we're all done. Let's put that back over here and we'll see if we can weasel the stuff on here. Make sure that these are flat against each other in the right order. So we have a bundle to get through. There we go. I've got those labeled. So now this expands greatly when you push it together. So that's what we're going to have to do to get these connectors through. To open up that a little bit more. Let's see if we can get this connector through here. The connector is going to be the challenge, it looks like. Okay. There's one. There's two. It's just a matter of kind of pushing this stuff so it bunches up. 
and just inching it on. A little piece of tape. To work our way over that. Push, grab the connectors there, and then pull on the other side. And it works its way right along. Almost there, getting to the end. All right, there comes one of them. There we go. We'll go ahead and smooth it down so it expands a little bit further again. And see how it worked out. If I've got enough on here or not. Yeah, I think I did. I'll just push some in there. Of course, uh, you can finish this off with some shrink wrap if you'd like over here. But uh, I don't think that's necessary on this one. It's going to hold together. And those will uh, just plug in here. One and two. And if you look really carefully here, it's hard to see. You can just see parts of some lettering coming out from underneath the uh, part there. Let me make sure it's focused. And this one over here I think says EXP1. This one over here says EXP2. Yep. So the thing is, these are keyed. Let's put EXP2 and EXP2. So even if you got these switched around, um, you wouldn't destroy the display or anything. It would just light up, but it wouldn't work. So you just have to flip them around again. But I think this is in the right position here. There we go. And this then plugs back down in here. like that and then we can just have that come out the top to, to our um, uh, LCD display there so I need to find uh, a little blower that will fit this guy I don't know if I have one I might have to order one someplace let let fit. Uh, it pushes that out a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. We could uh, grind a little slot in there or something, or just leave this sitting up a little bit. Just a little bit. There. And that would work. Or we could run it out the bottom if we have enough cable to get up to where we want to go. So I think we're ready uh, to go ahead and start finishing things up and start some final assembly. Um, one more thing I wanted to add is uh, I did add a couple of screws uh, right here. Let me get the wire out of the way right here that uh, this will just pop down on. If you can get it lined up properly. There we go. And then that just pushes down and just kind of will hang right there without a problem. 